The Grand Canyon is amazing. Its length is almost 446 kilometers measured from east to west. There is one of the highest viewing platforms in the world on its western part, hanging at an altitude of 1,200 meters. Learn more about the Grand Canyon. A true wonder of the world can be found in the northern part of the state of Arizona. This is the Grand Canyon of the Colorado River, which, not by accident, is included in the list of World Heritage Sites. The canyon is a gorge of the Colorado River, which cuts through the rock layers, creating a huge breach in the earth. Anyone standing on the edge of the canyon for the first time is surprised. The loudest groups fall silent. The majesty and beauty of this place is simply overwhelming. After a while, the vastness of the canyon reaches the viewers. From the edge, you can see the mountains, various rock formations, and somewhere at the very bottom, a very narrow, shiny ribbon of river. If you look closely, you might see people wandering along the paths inside the canyon or a helicopter flying. Then you will understand how big the canyon is. The dimensions of the canyon are impressive. Its length was measured along the current of the river and it is 446 kilometers. The beginning of the canyon is considered to be Lee's Ferry, and the end is determined at the Grand Wash Cliffs, which are located about 20 kilometers from the artificial Lake Mead. The width of the canyon at its narrowest point is 800 meters, and at its widest, 29 kilometers. At its deepest point in the Granite Gorge, the canyon reaches 1,857 meters. This makes the canyon the world's largest river gorge, although not the deepest one. Priority is held by the Colca Canyon in South America, which is more than twice as deep as the Grand Canyon but much shorter. You're probably curious about how the giant canyon was formed. There are several hypotheses. It was once assumed that the Colorado River simply cut into the rocks, gradually deepening the cleft. This took millions of years, and the age of the canyon was estimated at 300 million years. Today, it is already known that the canyon is much younger. Its origins date back to about 25, 30 million years, and the youngest parts are only about 5 or 6 million years old. It is likely that not only the river but also the uplift of the entire Colorado Highlands are responsible for its formation as a result of rather complicated processes inside the Earth's crust and asthenosphere related to the so-called seismic anomaly. Another theory is that the canyon was formed in a very short period of time, even a few days. It is thought to have formed as a result of powerful flash floods. What was it really like? More and more scientists are inclined to believe that various mechanisms contributed to the formation of the canyon. Its formation and shape were influenced by causes within the earth, as well as the river and floods. Regardless of how the canyon was formed, it is a true paradise for geologists and geology fans. Here you can trace the geological history of the earth. In the canyon, you will see rock layers from the Precambrian to the Triassic in the Mesozoic era. The age of the oldest rocks reaches almost 2 billion years. Each layer has a different color, making the canyon look fabulous. A variety of rocks can be found here, including shale, siltstone, limestone, sandstone, and granite. Numerous fossils can be found in many of the rock layers. You don't have to take notes. We have included all the practical info in the description below the video. That's where you can also find links with accommodation, tickets to attractions and tips on how to pay abroad so as not to overpay on currency conversions. The Grand Canyon area has been under protection since 1919. That's when a national park was established here. It is one of the older parks in the US. However, the local wildlife had already been protected by establishing reserves and national monuments. You can admire magnificent forests that grow around the canyon. You can also find small oases that provide shelter not only for hikers, but especially for the animals that live in these inhospitable places in the canyon itself. In the park, you can see, among others, elk deer, also known as wapiti, squirrels, black bears, wolves, and various species of birds. If you're lucky, you may encounter snakes, a coyote, or a porcupine, What is the best way to visit the canyon? 
you have to decide whether you want to see the south or the north part of it. Most tourists choose the south rim. This part of the canyon is more easily accessible and perfectly prepared to accommodate tourists. This is also where most of the attractions are located, including Hermit's Resets, Hopi Point, Mojave Point, Shoshone Point, Yavapai Point, Desert View Point and many others. Keep in mind, however, that the canyon is very long and individual attractions can be far apart. Be sure to take a look at the Grand Canyon Visitor Center. You can not only buy souvenirs there, but you can also go on various trails from there and, above all, view the canyon from the prepared vantage points of Matha Point and Yavapai Point. Sightseeing is made very easy by free buses that stop at the most interesting places. You get off and get on whenever and wherever you want. Trails leading down the canyon begin near the visitor center as well. Among the most interesting are South Kaibab Trail and Bright Angel Trailhead. You don't have to hike the entire trails, the trails are not very difficult, but the elevation changes and high temperatures make the hike tiring. However, even walking a piece of either of these trails will allow you to see the canyon from a completely different perspective. You can take the South Kaibab Trail and follow it to Ua Point. You will be rewarded with spectacular views and a rather exhausting return to the top. Don't forget to bring water to drink. Havasu Falls are located on the outside of the National Park, on the Indian Territory, and the date of the hike must be agreed upon in advance. The hike to the waterfalls is quite long, but the place is really worth the effort. There is one more place you should definitely visit, especially if you like challenges. It is the Skywalk Observation Deck. This terrace, built of reinforced glass, hangs 1,220 meters above the bottom of the canyon. Climbing the Skywalk and looking down gives you a great adrenaline rush. If you want to see wilder and less civilized part of the Grand Canyon, take the North Rim. However, you need to know that the drive from the southern to the northern part of the canyon is a 350 km long trip. Unlike the southern part, the part of the canyon on the northern rim is open to tourists from mid-May to mid-October. This is due to weather conditions, as the north rim is 305 meters higher than the south one. The north rim is definitely greener, so conditions for observing animals and plants are excellent. There are far fewer tourists, mostly true hikers who intend to take local long trails come here. If you want to tackle the Grand Canyon, then choose the North and South Kaibab Trails. It connects the northern and southern parts and is 37 kilometers long. The elevation difference of 1,980 meters will be taken during the hike. The trail can be completed in 19 hours, but it is better to divide it into two days. Not only will the hike be less tiring, but you will have more time to enjoy the amazing views. The Grand Canyon is huge, and a thorough tour in a short time is simply impossible. Therefore, to begin with, you should see the most interesting places that the park guidebooks suggest. At the entrance to the park, you will get a map and a guidebook. It is worth noting that admission to the park is not free. If you will be visiting other national parks in the USA, then think about buying an annual pass. It currently costs $80. You can visit all national parks on it, and it is valid for one year after visiting the first park. The Grand Canyon National Park is perfectly equipped to accommodate even large numbers of tourists. Convenient parking lots allow you to leave your car and go exploring. Since you can't get everywhere in your own car in the park, there is a free bus network that will take you to all the viewpoints and other places of interest. You can also go down into the canyon. The network of interesting routes is sizable. You can choose easier or more difficult routes, walk only a piece of any of them, and come back up. Or opt for a mule tour because such an option is also available. A bird's eye view of the canyon is also very interesting. Nearby are airports from which tour helicopters and planes take off. This kind of tour costs a bit, but the views you will see are simply priceless. Another option is to buy an organized tour. Different versions of the escapades offered will allow you to choose the most interesting one for you. Keep in mind that the distances here are really long, so take this into account when making your sightseeing plan. If you have little time, then focus on exploring the Grand Canyon Visitor Center area. It will take you quite a while to visit most of the interesting places here. 
There are campgrounds and campsites in the park. You can also rent a cabin. Keep safety in mind when visiting. Most of the designated viewpoints do have barriers, but you can practically walk up to the edge of the canyon at any point during your tour. They no longer have barriers, and the heights are downright dizzying. The south rim of the canyon is accessible year-round, and each season has its own unique charm. However, in the summer, the temperatures here are really high, so sightseeing can be not only tiresome but even dangerous to your health. In addition, at this time of year, real crowds of tourists are drawn here, so it is more difficult to find accommodation and a parking place. The perfect timing is between spring and autumn. Temperatures are a little lower, although it is still warm. There are far fewer tourists, and you can quietly enjoy the beautiful views. However, it should be remembered that rain and even torrential downpours also occur here. So it is worth remembering to check the weather forecast before setting out on the trail to the inside of the canyon. How about taking a winter trip to the Grand Canyon? The colorful rocks in the winter snow are a completely different version of the canyon. You can visit the southern edge even in winter, but remember that the northern part is accessible only for part of the year. You can only go there in late spring, summer, and autumn. Since it's cooler there and fewer tourists come, summer is a great time to visit the North Rim. In order to see this magical place that is the Grand Canyon, you first have to get there. Most tourists come here by car. They usually commute from Las Vegas or Phoenix. When you choose this means of transportation, you can reach the south rim of the canyon along the famous Route 66, which connected Chicago with Los Angeles. It takes about five hours to get there from both of these destinations. Driving from Las Vegas, you can take the opportunity to see a true marvel of engineering, namely the famous Hoover Dam and Lake Mead, which were created thanks to this dam. From Williams, take Highway 64 to Grand Canyon Village. You can get to Flagstaff by a small plane or a helicopter. However, this option is very expensive. Much cheaper, but requiring a lot of effort, will be a bus trip. Or maybe you will choose an organized trip on a vintage train from Las Vegas to Grand Canyon Village. Another option would be to get to Williams by bus, and then take the train, of course, the historic one. If you choose the North Rim, take Route 15 from Las Vegas and Route 67 from Jacob Lake. If you want to stay in the Grand Canyon for a few days, you can choose to stay in the park overnight. However, you can also stay in the nearby towns, such as Flagstaff or Williams. Not only is the latter great, as the famous Route 66 runs through it, but the hotels are somewhat cheaper than a stay in the park itself or in Tucson, which is close by. Whichever route you choose, expect a long drive and fantastic views. And when you get there, even after seeing hundreds of photos and videos of the Grand Canyon, you still won't be prepared for what you'll see. When you get to the rim, you'll see something amazing and breathtaking unfold before you. If you're already planning your trip, you can find accommodation and tickets to attractions on the spot in the links under the video description. You can also order a card for cheap payments abroad the same way. Press the bell and subscribe to our channel if you want to receive notifications about new episodes. Have a nice trip!